Good morning. All right, get everybody up. So my name's Danny. I came all the way from Canada to come talk to you. Any Canadians in the room? Yes, yes. So some of you will understand me when I say things like toque and poutine, yeah, and a boot. All right. Um, I've got 10 minutes to show you something that's probably taken me my entire adult career to figure out. And it's one of the, it's a habit, it's a, it's a, it's a personality trait that exists within most entrepreneurs that a lot of us don't discover till later along our business careers. And the data points that I'm basing a lot of my talk on is personally on myself. So I'm going to speak a lot to my own story and things I've been through as an entrepreneur, but also on, I'd say, close to almost a thousand entrepreneurs that I've worked with over the last 10 years. Um, my background's in franchising. So I spent a lot of years building a franchise system in the painting world teaching franchising in the painting world and working with franchisees and helping them develop their careers and their businesses along the way. I since left that and I've built my own little business called Breakthrough Academy where we teach entrepreneurs how to build their companies as if they were a franchisee of ours, but they're not. They're their own independent contractor. And from that, I've gotten kind of a bird's eye view of what's really going on. And what's cool is I struggle myself as an entrepreneur building my own business with what I do. And I see the same pattern and habit in all of you. And what I'm gonna try and do is just show you a little bit of what's going on behind the scenes and help you self-identify where your strengths are, and also where your weaknesses are, and how to plug the holes to help your organization grow effectively because you are not gonna be the source of all answers as you grow to the next level. Sound good? Sounds terrible, all right. <laughs> all right, so this is me and my wife and my three little girls. I've worked very, very hard to keep the people in that picture happy, right? Happy wife, happy life, right? And I've discovered that firsthand. Now with my kids, it's even more amplified. I don't think I would have three kids right now if I didn't figure out some of the stuff I'm about to talk to you about. Reason being, my wife's been with me since I was 16 years old. She's supported me through everything I've ever been through in my life, but there was definitely a point where she said, you better get your shit together or we're not gonna stay together, right? Because I was working too hard. I was an obsessed entrepreneur. How many of you are obsessed with what you're doing? Be honest, thank you. I was too, and I was growing, and I was going from this like dyslexic, dysfunctional human being to a successful human being, right? And for a lot of us as entrepreneurs, we don't fit in society in a normal fashion, right? Like I got fired from a lot of jobs when I was a kid. I lost both my parents when I was younger, so I, I had this like, spirit of like, no one's gonna do it for me, I better figure it out, and it woke me up. And it taught me that I could either be a failure in life or I can find this way to be successful. And the normal job world wasn't quite my gig. Being dyslexic really didn't make education super fun for me. And then I found this thing called running a business. And for the first few years of my life, that was where I put all my energy. And we grew, and we grew quickly. We got up to about $11 million a year running a painting business. And for a lot of people, they'd look at me and say, Danny, like, you're one of the most successful people I know. But I wasn't super happy because I was working 80 hours a week, I was sacrificing everything else in my life, and I knew something was wrong the day I was driving home after a long day at work, and it was like, I don't know, like 10 at night, and I saw somebody walking their dog, maybe it was a little earlier, maybe it was like 8.30, but I saw somebody walking their dog home, and I was like, walking your dog home? Man, I totally forgot what that even is like. Like, I wasn't doing any like normal human being stuff. I was just living in the business all day, every day. Now my wife, girlfriend at the time, hadn't, hadn't married me quite yet, was like, look Danny, like, you suck at your job. And I was like, what do you mean I suck at my job? I'm like, I've grown this big business, she should be proud of me. She's like, no, you suck at your job. All you do is this, and it can't survive unless you're there all the time doing every little part of it at all times. And she said, you gotta get better at your job or I'm not gonna stay with you. And it forced me to change the way I thought about success. You know, success isn't just having money or having like success in business, it's also having the time you need and deserve to enjoy it along the way. And I had to shift my mentality from I'm gonna be the doer of all things, to I'm gonna shift to like, I'm gonna help create an environment so that great people can be around me. This is what I'm gonna get into. So here's the challenge most of us go through. When we first start business, that piss and vinegar that drives the business forward isn't necessarily the thing that's gonna help it move forward to that next stage. What got us to that initial level of success isn't gonna help us grow to that next level, right? The reality for a lot of us is we're busy getting materials, talking to customers, fixing vans, getting cash for, for, to pay for our guys, getting our guys you know, to their next job site. We're taking care of the day to day, every day. And we've plugged ourselves into all these little avenues because we're the best at it and we're the, we can get it done quicker than anyone else and whatever, it's a quick solution to a long-term problem. And the, and the dream, and the reason all of you are here right now, 
is you have this dream where you can be just reviewing financials and the team's out running things without you even seeing the customer and things get paid for without having to get you too involved and, and the machine operates. But that, that, that dream often doesn't happen because we get stuck in our own way. And here's some of the stuff that I've noticed for myself personally, and I would say all of you at some level have one or two, maybe all of these going on in your business or in your life right now. You suck at details. How many of you suck writing up job descriptions, looking through numbers, playing with Excel sheets? How many of you suck with the details? Be honest with me, thank you. I do too. I'm dyslexic, probably ADD, not diagnosed ADD, but definitely diagnosed as dyslexic. I can't handle details too well. They drive me buggy crazy. Some of us have pride and ego. This is my business, I built this, I was the strongest, I did this myself. You better believe I did. My ego was this. I may not be as smart as you, but you better believe I'll fucking outwork you. And that's how I won in life. But it was starting to hold me back. Because again, it was ego. Ego is great to a point, but it eventually gets in your way. Here's another big one, lack of trust in your team. My team's good, but like, they're all kind of B players, and like, whenever I leave them to things, like, it just doesn't work out properly. Let me just take care of it myself, right? Or a lack of diversity across your team. I've hired a bunch of people that I love. They're all so cool and similar to me, and wait a minute, there's no one different, and no one's good at details, and we're all the same, and it's hard to actually run a well-developed company. Or for a lot of us, as I mentioned a lot of times, I struggle with entrepreneur ADD another, or otherwise known as another darn distraction. So whether you're diagnosed with ADD or not, running a business over time creates this environment where there's so much coming at you at all times. And especially in North America, we have more opportunity than we know what to do with. You know, like I've taken on massive commercial projects I should not have taken on. I hired way too many people too quickly because of this big opportunity to grow the business properly. I had this big marketing idea and campaign I spent all this time doing that netted us zero results because I got squirrel syndrome. And I was off excited about what could be without understanding what should be and planning it long term. So how many of at least one of these things on this list is in your way right now? Cool. So here's my, here's my thought or here's the solution that I've, I'm seeing and I'm noticing a lot of us need to kind of own up to. We need to learn to let go. We need to stop being the doers of all the things that we hold on to and do every day and learn how to step back and start to be the leader of good people and the builder of good systems. And that takes discipline and that takes time and that takes a ton of intentionality and it takes a team. And this is what I call the A team. So what I want you guys to do and what I thought would be a cool exercise for today is I'm gonna go through each profile of these people. And these are actually, this is one of them is me and the two other ones are my business partners. So I have two business partners I work with. But this isn't just me, this is like other companies that work out there every day, whether it's your business partner or one of your key staff members, you probably have a bit of the A-team being assembled right now. Or maybe you don't and you crave one or two of these people. What I thought would be cool is as I go through each profile, I'm gonna get you, all of you, please do, identify who you identify with the most. Some of you will feel you identify with two or maybe even all three of them. And then after, I want you to stand up as I call each, each category out. And I wanna see if you guys can identify who would be someone to connect with that's opposite to you at this conference. And not just connect with like-minded people, but people that think quite differently than you and learn about them. Because this little group of three that I'm about to show you is what I've discovered after talking to hundreds and almost a thousand entrepreneurs, what everybody needs in the business. The only person I've really met that's like this is probably Elon Musk. He's got all three, he's a mutant. Look at his stock price, it's nuts. Anyway, um, so we start with the dreamer. So they're a self-starter, and they often have a hint of crazy. They're often ADD or dyslexic. Ideas are coming out of their ears all day long. They trust their gut. They go with what feels right. They're an absolutely incredible world-class problem solver. They can get themselves in and out of any mess. And they're always trying to improve the system, resulting often in unnecessary complexity. Just hands up for now, you don't have to stand up, but who identifies with this dreamer? I thought a lot of us would. I thought this would be the major source of the room. Me too, all right? It's okay, we're all dysfunctional together. Next we have the implementer. This person is highly detail-oriented. They're OCD, so they're obsessive compulsive, and they seek perfection at all times. They're excellent at identifying good ideas of the dreamer, so they can pluck out all the crazy crap and just say, this is the good stuff. This is the stuff we need to focus on. They use data to make a lot of their decisions. 
And they build things once to last the test of time. And ultimately, they make complex ideas extremely simple. This is going to be a rare human being, but who's an implementer in the room? Cool. There's a few of you. I'm going to get you guys to stand up in a bit. I praise you, and we need you. Holy cow. <laughs> and here's the last one, the one that makes the wheels turn. I call them the specialist. They're the master of their craft. They're the only clinically sane one of the bunch. <laughs> they execute best when given direction and a plan. They, they use experience to make most of their independent decisions. They love to just follow the system itself, and they're loyal to a fault. Who's the specialist? Cool. OK. Do you, do you guys see this in your own team? Do you guys see pieces of this, or even in your own brain, where maybe you're, you're one and a half of these people, or you're two of these people? It's the dreamer that gets things started. It's the implementer that helps systemize that thing so it can actually grow and scale. It's the execution, or the specialist that executes and delivers on the promises of the company every day. For me, I'm the dreamer. My implementer, business partner, if you met him last year, he came by. His name is Igor Trinenek. And you have yet to meet the specialist who's in the back end helping all of our business grow and develop, basically fulfilling our coaching promises, uh, James Dale, who works with our coaching team. Those three guys I met when I was 18 years old. Those three guys, we all ran different businesses as we grew through this franchise organization over the years. And the minute the three of us decided to work together and build this little thing called Breakthrough Academy, we blew up. We're currently the 16th fastest startup in Canada. It's not me. It's the three of us working together in unison, completely aligned in our core values, but completely different in our skill sets and what we have to offer. And I encourage all of you, as you grow your organizations and you develop yourself, don't put it all on yourself. You don't have to be everything. Be one and let other people be the specialists in their world. So what I thought would be a cool exercise is to get you to actually stand up with the person you identify most and everyone else look at those people and find one of them out of the crowd that you're like, I should talk to that person because I need one of those types of people in my, in my business or in my life. Not to, not to recruit them, but to just to understand them and profile them. It's going to be something we're going to go through in our recruiting course coming up in a bit here. So who's a dreamer? Stand up the dreamers. I know there's a lot of you. So if you're an implementer or a specialist, and you need the perspective or the thought of a dreamer, identify somebody in the room right now that you can talk with over lunch and just be like, let me understand your brain. Because you're going to want to profile these dreamers and be able to recruit effectively for people like this. Whether they become business partners or just people that help you run your organization, you need dreamers. OK, dreamers, you can sit down. Thank you. Who's an implementer? Who identifies most as an implementer? Dreamers, you need these people. <laughs> Nothing will ever become truly real until you have them an implementer in your life. Identify someone in the room that you can connect with over lunch and talk with and understand their brain, the way they think and the way they operate, and profile that person. OK, you guys can sit down. And specialists, who identifies most as a specialist? Stand on up. So dreamers and implementers, you guys can go build the coolest business ever, but ain't nothing going to happen unless you've got an implementer that can back all your, all your words up. So again, people who are in, in a phase of needing someone to help execute, identify those implementers. Or specialists, sorry. So here's my closing thoughts. This is something that came, out, came to me over Christmas. I don't know, maybe God gave it to me because it sounded smarter than me. Big dreams are just dreams until we head out there and go do them. Then and only then are we going to know how big they are. And as entrepreneurs, that doesn't mean just doing all the stuff we, we love to do, do every day. It's doing the hard stuff, the stuff we avoid, the stuff we're not, maybe not the greatest at. But it's building, being willing to trudge, trudge through the muck, do the stuff that's challenging, and reach our own potential that's much bigger than probably what it is currently, unless we push ourselves to that next level. And I know for me as an entrepreneur, I live out of my comfort zone every single day. I've literally cried every year I've ever run a business since I was 18 years old. It's like clockwork. I'm like, oh, here comes the tears this year. That's good, though. It pushes me. It makes me become better, and it makes me learn. And if you think about it, we don't learn very much as entrepreneurs or even as people unless we go through some of the most challenging things in our lives. Right? If I look at the person who I am today, it's derived out of the loss of my parents. It's derived out of the businesses that I've grown over, you know, if you want to know the company I used to work with, College Pro Painters, with Breakthrough Academy. The things I push myself, having three kids, learning to be a good husband, these are the things that push my boundaries, and yet I openly want more of it, because that's only, the only thing that's really going to make me grow. So here's my thoughts. I'm going to be running um, 
I would say a fairly like intense and in detailed recruiting process um, on Friday. I'm gonna show you guys how to identify the missing gaps in your business. So today was just kind of an identifier of some of the more, I'd say more key management people in the company. But how do you identify the biggest gaps in your company? How do you profile your ideal candidate? This is why I wanted you to talk to some of the people in the room that are different than you, so you can profile one of these people. Once you've profiled these people, how do you reverse engineer an entire recruiting process that would attract that person into your business? Because here's the thing. In 2008, what were we in the recession of? What was the hard thing to get? Work. What's, what are we currently in the recession of? People. For how many of you, getting people is the biggest challenge in your company right now? Almost all of us, right? So in this session, we're gonna go through how do you take a recruiting process and turn it into a bit of a sales and marketing process that will actually funnel in and attract people properly, then and only then allow you to vet and screen people effectively. But you can't vet people when you've only got three resumes, you know, one of them's a C candidate, one guy showed up not on drugs and on time, so that guy got hired, right? <laughs> you need to be able to have a little more options to be able to pick from. And to do that, you have to become very good at sales and marketing, but from a recruiting front. And that's what we're going to focus on. So that'll be on Friday. Look forward to seeing you guys then, and thanks for having me.